Yo. People, people. People, people. People, people. All over the world. People, people. People, people. People, people. All over the world. <laughs> What's up, guys? What up, Chris? A single is fire. Pastor TJ McBride is on the live. <laughs> hey, Amen. Tabernacle of Praise. One church, three locations. McDonough, Jonesboro, and Griffin, if you're in the Atlanta area. I see y'all having that revival, man. It's crazy. Mike City, what up, brother? Man, Mike City, it's been a minute, man. <laughs> That's what's up. Uh, Brian Alexander Morgan, man. What's up, brother? It's a legend right there. It's going fast. Listen, I, I'm on uh, just for a moment. I was sitting here reading, trying to figure out. I know this is for a lot of you know people who speak and have to study and pastors, preachers, teachers, you know, people that, you know, poets and uh, people that do seminars, just people who speak in front of people for a living, communicators in general, right? Is it me? Yeah, I I can be doing anything all day, just up, just to, the moment I, I start reading, the moment I start like, why is, why am I so sleepy? I was not sleepy. I wasn't sleepy at all. I was not <laughs> sleepy. I know I'm talking funny. I have Invisalign in my mouth, guys. It's very, it's been very challenging trying to talk through this Invisalign. People thought my, my teeth were so straight. My my teeth was were gradually just moving and shifting. So it started to look like my mouth looked like I bit the boom out of a bomb. <laughs> ah, oh shoot. Uh but yeah, uh, um I start reading and I'm like, next thing you know, I'll wake up going, wait a minute, I've been asleep for 30 minutes? I read half a page. I don't understand what's going on here. At this rate, I hope the Holy Ghost just just injects some wisdom in my brain as I'm up. Hey, baby. My wife is on here. <laughs> hey, baby. You know, I'll be reading and trying to just, you know, I, I, I have I have a really great library of books that I like to read. Some of them I read a hundred times. But so, man, it takes so long. I, I have friends who read books. That, well, I have friends who read books really fast. They go through them quickly. And I started this way back when I started, you know, going to Bible college years ago uh, in seminary, uh, reading a book a week. I would take the number of pages the book was, if it was you know, 347 pages or whatever. And I would divide that by seven and read that many pages a day. That's how I would get through it. Uh, problem with that is that system was cool. I got through the book, but I seldom retained anything. And I'm not one of these guys that does the audio books because I don't, for some reason, if I listen to the book, I don't retain the information as much as if I read it. You know, I can listen to the book and read it at the same time. Like, like I remember I started doing that when uh, Bishop Jakes came out with a the book he did, uh, Instinct. And I was listening to the audio and reading the, the book at the same time, reading the, uh, the uh, actual book at the same time. And that was cool, but it seems like, you know, that system of reading the book in a week was cool, but I didn't retain. So now I just read slow. The problem with that is I fall asleep so fast. I don't know. I, but I do remember when I was a little kid. 
this is not good at all. There was a lady in my church by the name of Sister Leslie Wade. She's since passed on. She was one of those older ladies in the church when I was 10, 11, 12 years old, and she would get up and testify. And she would say, you know, sometimes as saints of God, we have trouble sleeping. It seems like the devil is just messing with us and we can't sleep at night. Baby, I tell you, if you just read your <laughs> read your Bible, oh, some of the <laughs> oh, some of the best sleep you'll ever get. <laughs> she was she was promoting the Bible as a as a sleep aid. <laughs> if you can't sleep, oh, read your Bible. I was like, dang. How should we be reading the Bible to go to sleep or to? I don't know. Yes, August 21st is the best day of the year. Yes, it is. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm sitting here reading. I'm not preparing for service tomorrow. I'm reading something else. My message, thank God, is already in the can. But what I think it is anyway. But thank God I'm not trying to like, you know, uh, prepare a study for tomorrow's message because I can't stay awake. I cannot. Uh, But uh, anyway, Ash, what's up, Ash? I'm definitely coming back to South Africa, man. I, I miss you guys so much. Tell everybody in the collective, I said, what's up? I'll be back soon. I'm com- I'm definitely coming back. I- We're going to bring my father this year in December to to Cape Town for his he- my dad is turning 70 this year. So, we're going to bring him out there. What's up, Star? What up, baby girl? Uh yeah. Listen. Now, let me talk to those of you who are on here. And I'll post this later that our members or attend the California Worship Center, 214 McClay Avenue, North McClay Avenue in the city of San Fernando. Uh, let me just say this to you. It's raining outside right now. If we know how y'all do in LA in the rain, y'all act like the rain is a blizzard and you can't, y'all come to church tomorrow, okay? Come to church tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the power of focused faith is going to be good. It's going to be good. I, you know, I don't think I'm going to be doing a whole lot of yelling and screaming tomorrow. You know, I, I'm I'm tired. Last week, I didn't realize what I was doing. We were preaching last week, and uh, <laughs> I don't. I didn't remember doing this, but I was jumping. I got so hyped at the end of my message, I just started jumping up and down. Boom, 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 boom. And when we got home, I started to walk upstairs and I said, wait a minute, why do my legs hurt like I've been doing squats? You know what I'm saying? And my wife said, because you was jumping around. I'm like, jumping? I went back and watched the the um, message. And I started, at one point, I started jumping and like a lot, I was like up and down, up and down, just jumping real as high as I could. So tomorrow, I don't think I'm doing that tomorrow, but. It's raining, but I need y'all to come to church. Okay? Come to church. Or if you're not coming, log on. Get on your app and log on. Cause uh, you know, y'all get y'all get weird in the, y'all get weird in the rain. You really do. I don't I don't know what it is. Uh but y'all come on out. Uh oh. What I miss? Oh, it's D Lamar, what up? He said that's everywhere, yeah. Uh, Mr. Kimber, could it be, uh oh, could that you're getting f- forward in age? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. It could be that. What up, what up, what up, guys? Oh, man, it's so good. I haven't been on here in a long time. Y'all waving at me? This is a way. I ain't seen this before. Yeah, so 
I'm going to try my best to keep reading this book. Uh, and it's a good book, actually. Check this out. I was having a conversation with one of my friends that I can't remember. I, it might have been Pastor Albert Tate. It might have been Pastor Aaron Lindsay, maybe. Somebody I was talking to on the phone, and they told me about this book called Enduring Words by David Guzik. Uh, here it is here. Enduring Words. Enduring Words. It's, it's, it's so far, it's really, 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 a really cool read. Um, you know, what, what, is, what, is, what does Isaiah say? He says, um, uh, heaven and earth shall pass away. Um, but the word of God, you know, matter of fact, it says something like, something like, um, what is it? Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the grass withers and the, and the flower fades. Doesn't it say that the glass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God, uh, stands literally forever. So this man wrote this book, Enduring Words. T.O., what up? Um, hello, Les hello, Leslie South Hall. Uh, but yeah, so that book is great. How many readers do I have on here? That's what we need to really start pushing. And I got to give some really strong, great language to, uh, my friend in Chicago, Pastor Charlie Dates, who was pastoring two churches there. Salem Baptist Church is one of the largest churches in the country and also a large church called Progressive Baptist Church in Chicago. And he started a program for young boys, right? Uh, I think he had I did a program last, this past summer with 300 boys, uh, a literacy program, which we will be um, employing at our church very, very soon. Because, you know, for some reason, our young our young boys are not reading. Um, even at a they they they're they're twelve and thirteen and can't read at a third grade level. You know what I'm saying? And that is uh, that is if it's not anything else, it is uh, that's that's a tragedy in my book. That is uh, that is an emergency. Right. Because if you think about it, what was the biggest hold that the South and slavery had on black people? It was ignorance. Even if a, a white person was caught teaching a slave how to read. This is back in slavery. They would be fined $50 back then. Uh, $50 during slavery. Slavery is probably like, you know. 15, 50,000 now, so, you know, it's a lot of money. They'd be fined be fine $50 and jail time. And so there was a guy who was a slave. His name was John W. Fields. And he said after the Emancipation Proclamation, actually a year after that, when General uh, Gordon Granger wrote through Galveston, Texas, uh, was in, in June of that year, which is where we get, you know, Juneteenth from. They didn't know they were free. But when he found out, he says, yeah, we can leave. But we were so ignorant because we they kept us ignorant. We didn't know what. We couldn't even fathom leaving because we can go. But where are we going? So I, I'm an advocate for reading. Please read, 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 read. My, my, my uncle, who is very intelligent. It's my father's younger brother. He's very intelligent. He's eight years younger than my father. But he is on the streets he's he's been dealing in in um dealing with addiction my whole life we can't find him to this day we don't know where he is sometimes he pops up sometimes he doesn't when i was a little kid my uncle my son was uncle brian would tell me to read everything he said i don't care what read billboards read newspapers read magazines read everything you could possibly read just read 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 and um i i did i i, I read a lot i read a lot of things and what it has done for me and my vocabulary, me and my understanding, me and my worldview, how I see the world, how I 
you know, how I imagine, how my imagination works, how I ideate, how I, how I uh, am in conversation. It's, it's made me a better conversationalist. It's made me a better listener because I'm taking in information without talking. And a lot of people, they have conversations, but, you know, I have some family members like this that I, that I don't like talking to them. Because they don't know how to let you talk. They just want to talk. <laughs> You'd be 30 minutes. You'd be like, okay, so did you start this conversation with me so you could just talk? Or did you actually want me to respond? So reading really helps with that as well. Because you are taking in all this. You're taking in somebody's point of view and somebody else's side for hours without saying anything. It's just good. It's a good practice. Uh, but anyway, what's up, Calvin? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, hey, guys, um, it's been fun. I had fun talking to you. Um, next time. Cali Worship, y'all come to church tomorrow, okay? Come to church, 214 McClay Avenue in the city of, what's up, Alicia? San Francisco, San Francisco, Jesus. In the city of San Fernando. Um, we need new music from Mary Mary. Yep, you're going to get it. Listen, did you guys know that 2025, I'm not just, I'm not giving you any, you know, concrete anything about when their next album is coming. Um, but 2025 is the 25th anniversary of Mary Mary. Something could happen. Something could happen. You just never know. Get like 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 Bishop Jake said. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Uh, but yeah, Mary Mary's coming again. Don't worry. They broke up. They broke up. Listen, I don't know where y'all got the Mary Mary broke up. I don't know how they broke up and that y'all keep seeing them do shows. I saw them at the Super Bowl. The other year, y'all saw them do, you know, you see them do all kind of stuff here and there. They're doing other things, but they did not break up. They're still sisters. They're still best friends. They still, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, this year at the Super Bowl, they're doing, they're going to Vegas to do something for the Super Bowl. The, the Super Bowl has a, uh, the Super Bowl gospel show that they put on. Mary Mary will be there. They'll be there. Uh, so, they they're not they have not gone anywhere. We just haven't released an album in a long time. Partly because Man, let me talk about this for a minute before I leave. Before I leave. Partly because uh as music creators and content creators, we have not changed. The process by which we make music, writing, producing, having to go to the studio sing the records, perform the records, you know, do all the things we have to do in the studio. That has not changed, really. But the way you guys consume music has changed. So where you used to buy CDs, right, that cost $22 or even if it cost $15, that, that directly affected, you know, us. So we could see that income right away. If we sold 100,000, 200,000, a million CDs, we see where our money is. Now you guys stream music or you get it on YouTube or you do other stuff, you know, to where we can't really see the the revenue like that. And there's a there's a big disparity. There's a there's a big problem with it because um, you know, I have I'm a I'm a label owner and to to, to be able to make these albums, it I it still costs the same. <laughs> it, matter of fact it costs more. To make albums, right? To, especially the way I do it, and to do that, and not, and the money that I used to make is not even. I mean, it's been cut down. I'm talking like significantly. So, uh, we were celebrating. My team started um, posting when the Walls Group, which is signed to our label, uh, My Block, the Walls Group on their last album that they just released a little while ago called Four Walls, which is a great album. Go check that out. When they hit 10 million 
and streams. My team sent out this big press thing and on Instagram, congratulations. And I'm looking at the numbers going, yeah, this is 10 million. Is great, but that's, not, that's really, that's only about $30,000 for me. If that, that's not a lot of money. <laughs> it's not, it, 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 matter of fact, it ain't even 30,000. It's not even that. That's not even a, that's not even a quarter of of what that's that's made that may be fifteen percent of what I spent making that album. So you know, one million streams equals like fifteen hundred dollars. It's not a lot of money. So we have to stream sort of. We got to stream in the billions to really make money. Now the only genres that do that is hip hop. So streaming works well for hip hop and in the bigger pop acts and stuff like that. They stream, you know, they're up there. But our genre, you know, R&B, um, urban AC R&B, and the gospel, this is, we don't stream in those numbers. Our fans, you guys, you guys don't stream like that. And a lot of them are older and rather just buy a CD at the show. So it's, uh, excuse me, it's, um, it's different. So one of the reasons why you haven't seen a Mary Mary album, because I refuse to do one. I refuse to go in that studio and break my neck doing this album for nothing. Like you guys, the that that lover will enjoy it, but like you know, like I'm thinking about the album that we did called The Sound. That that was in oh eight. It came out oh eight oh nine maybe. I think it came out two thousand nine with the song God and Me is on that album and some other stuff. Great album. But man, it was it was tough to do that album. It was man, we went through it. I loved it, but it was it was work, a lot of work, and and it did well. You know, that album went gold, maybe, maybe platinum by now. But like, yeah, it was, and that's worth it. But when you do an album like that, and I know the fans love it, and we make twenty seven cents from it, oh, man, that's tough. It's tough to do. So, I think what we're going to do. On the next Mary Mary album, on the next Erica Campbell uh, project we do, next Walls group, whatever we do, I think we're going to come directly to you guys. Directly to y'all. When, when Tony Estes puts out records and Joy Star and, and, and the next Lena Bird Miles stuff that we put out, we're coming straight to y'all and say, here. We're going we're gonna to say, here, here, can y'all pay $15 for a download? You can only get it. You can only get this album. You can only get this album on the My Block website. It'll be compatible with your, you know, you can put it in your iTunes playlist, whatever you want to do. But that's the only place you're going to be able to get it. Understand what I'm saying? You know, for, for $15.99 <laughs> or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? And... If you do that, even in a small number, like even if we only get a hundred thousand of those, then now guess what? We can now we can function. We can go on tour. We have business. We can, you know, we can say, hey, you buy that, and you know, you can get a ticket to the show as well for free. We can do all these different things. So, um, I believe that's fair. I, I believe that's fair. Do, do what? What do y'all think? You know, and then other merch. We'll have other merch too. But just in terms of how much it costs. If I if I spend two fifty two hundred fifty thousand dollars making an album, another three hundred thousand dollars promoting and marketing that album, and can't make thirty thousand dollars, how long can I do that until I'm out of business? See what I'm saying? You know, Nike don't have that problem. They got they 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 make their shoes. I I, I know this because I used to be a, a part owner of a sneaker store. In Atlanta, we would buy, say, like Air Force Ones. We would charge ninety dollars for them. It only cost them four dollars to make them, and they charge us ten dollars to buy them wholesale, and we charge ninety dollars. That's a, you know, that's business. But if it if it costs me ninety dollars to make it, and I only make eighty dollars in return, man, you know. Someone says, I think there should be a platform governed by the music community that properly pays the artists 
and cuts out Spotify and platforms that don't pay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not against Spotify. I'm not. In, listen, don't get don't get me wrong. Not, I'm not against Apple Music or Tidal or or any of those things. But what I'm saying is, they should pay more. We can we get can we get a penny per stream? We're not even we're not even getting a penny per stream. We're getting somewhere between seven and seventeen percent of a penny. Man, that's just man, that's not cool. That is not that is not cool, you know. Um and so oh somebody said, What's good? Thanks for plugging my son Titus on Forever Mountain remix. Let me know if you want to Oh yeah, sis and little bro. They did well. That, that he he killed that verse. Tell him I I haven't got to meet him in person, but tell him tell him I said, What up? And he did a great job. But yeah, so yeah, I, I just think you know, if you want your favorite artist to continue to be your favorite artist and continue to work, because listen, the the music that they're creating, like the the album that we kind of have sitting in the can and the music that we've written so far, you guys are gonna love this music, Mary Mary fans. You're going you're really going to be like, whoa, this is we been we waited and it was worth the wait, but you know, we can't afford to do it. I, at one point, I was thinking of saying, you know what? You know what the number one stream music is in South Africa or in Africa in the continent? It's gospel music. I was thinking about going over there and doing Mary Mary, Mary Mary's album there, releasing it there and saying, you know, just forget about the States for a while. We'll do the States later. We'll go where the music is appreciated because this is an American thing that's happening to us uh, because all over the world, they appreciate the music very differently. Very differently. You go to London, they love gospel music. Sweden... Germany, all over South Africa, Australia, all over Asia. Oh, my God. They treat it and they'll pay for it. So an artist can be an artist. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and I just think it's about, it's about fairness. You know, it, it's art that we are creating. It's art. So if you have one of my favorite artists is he's passed on. His name was Ernie Barnes. Do y'all remember uh, the Sugar Shack painting that Marvin Gaye used? On his, I think it's what's not what's going on album. Um, what's the name of that album? But uh, but the painting is Ernie Barnes' Sugar Shack painting. Or if you watch Good Times, anytime you saw JJ painting in the background, those were Ernie Barnes' paintings, right? Which I, I've purchased a couple of his paintings. I love his art, but his art appreciates. You can't buy one of them pieces of, you know, even a print. You can't buy it for under six hundred dollars. Which is one of the reasons I, uh, that 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 Nipsey Hussle was way ahead of his time selling his album for a hundred dollars or a hundred fifty dollars because he said, "Yo, this is art. <laughs> this is it should appreciate. Uh, why is it that, especially uh, our urban and black music, which I don't understand why we even call it black music. It's just music. Why are we calling it black music when all this music we created? Amen. Nobody. We created rock and roll." Country, country, and western is, country and western is based on black music, on us. Hip hop created it. Rock created it. All of it. Jazz, ours. So, yeah, yeah. Eddie Murphy does own that original Sugar Shack painting. Got it in a got it for a steal too. Anyway, um, but yeah, this is art. It should appreciate. So don't don't allow, you know. Just, I just need you guys to think different about it. You're allowing our music to be diminished. And then by it diminishing, so does the value of the artists themselves. They can't even, they, they can't even afford rent, some of these guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy for an artist who's contributed so much to the world, who is now, I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying one particular artist, but there are many of them, who are, who's now in his 60s or 70s and can't live and 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 has sold you know 50 million albums over the you know what I'm saying that that's that's not fair you know what I'm saying so I I need you guys as consumers to consume differently so when when we come back like Mary Mary whoever else we do Mary Mary this person that person this artist that artist 
and we come directly to you and say, here, here's a direct download, pays 15 bucks. You can have it. I need y'all to hit that in the thousands and millions. Hit that and, and, and see what happens. It's a new business model. It ain't a new business model, but <laughs> it's just taking us back a little bit to, to a place where the artists and the independent companies like myself can actually make revenue, you know, not and, and we can share the revenue because the thing is, when I sign artists, I sign these artists because I know we can make great music together, but also it's based on the model of live. This is business. I want you guys to make money. I, I want you guys to to feel good about what you're doing. Like, you know, you can provide for your families with your art. You out here hustling and making this music and, and can't pay your car note. That, that, that does not compute. As y'all say, the math ain't mathing. Huh? Did I, did, did I say something? Did I say something? I can't hear nobody. All right, I'm out of gas. Y'all, you know, I don't like to talk this much on here, but love y'all, man. And I mean it. See you in a minute. Peace.